Hi everyone and welcome to Mental Health Mondays. I am Carrie Biscalonis, founder of Reset Brain and Body, here to talk to you this week about what is a healthy marriage or partnership. Now, a lot of you might understand the obvious things like, oh, maybe my partner and I are seemingly happy or we're coexisting, we're not arguing too much, but let's talk about things going a little bit deeper. And I wanna to talk to you also about maybe some of the signs that might be more subtle. So I'm gonna give you five things to pay attention to that will give you insight into whether you are operating within a healthy marriage or there is some room for improvement. And so number one is whether you and your partner have a foundation that is safe and secure. And what I mean by this is that you feel like you can feel just simply safe with your partner, that you can talk to your partner in a environment where you feel like you can be respected, you can be heard, and there's not a overarching theme of insecurity and passive aggression, just a passive aggression with you and your partner. And so that's kind of one of those fundamental needs in a relationship and a fundamental need for a healthy marriage is a safe haven. Seeing this person as a best friend, right? Someone that is there to support you and be there for you again, that is there to make you feel safe. If there is no safety, if you don't feel like your partner is a safe haven for you, well, that's a pretty important sign that it is an unhealthy marriage. Number two, there's emotional connection. So of course, emotional connection is an important thing, but what I'm talking about is actually a deeper layer of emotional connection of is this something, someone that I can and I want to talk to? There's a difference between can and want to talk to. Is this someone that is available to talk to? Is this someone that I actually want to be vulnerable with? Again, going back to safe haven, is this someone that I feel safe talking to? Is this someone that I feel safe being vulnerable with? Is this someone that I think can hear me? Is this someone that I feel like can hear my feelings? Now, a lot of times when we are in an unhealthy partnership, when we're talking, when we're trying to connect emotionally, that can be met with withdrawal, defensiveness, blame, perhaps even gaslighting because you're in a narcissist type of relationship. There might be judgment, again, going back to that passive aggression that might be happening. Number three, appreciation in a marriage or a partnership. And this isn't appreciation for the big things like, oh, thank you for the Mother's Day present. This is appreciation for the small things. Hey, I noticed how you put the kids' laundry away yesterday. Thank you so much. Or I noticed how you reacted to our son last night when he was melting down. That was really emotionally intuitive. Thank you so much for tightening the lid on the milk because I know that you know, that's a big pet peeve. And I appreciate you thinking of that. Thanks for remembering to buy the dog food, right? The small things, validating the fact that you are noticing where they're trying and that you're getting that back in return. That's really important to give credit where effort is being put forth, where someone is being selfless, where someone is thinking about someone else, where someone is, again, just putting in that effort with the small things. Because getting flowers once a week or getting a, you know, a date night isn't necessarily going to make up for all of the small opportunities that were missed that creates the resentment. And so when we celebrate and we focus on the small ways in which we appreciate and can take care of each other, that is a healthy marriage. So this can even go a little bit further in which we start to talk about the small ways in which we love them. Hey, I love when you talk to our kids that way. I, what I love about you is how you take a moment in the morning to just look outside and look at the flowers and appreciate where we live. 
Something I love about you is the way that you sing in the shower, right? Little things that also make you remember your partner in all the ways in which you originally fell in love with them, all the ways in which you appreciate them. So it works for them and it works for you. Number five, four, we're on four. <laughs> Number four is keeping control of reactivity. And so we know that when fire is met with fire, it explodes. And so how can we, when one of our part, you know, one person in the partnership or even the energy in the household has a lot of fuel, how do we meet that with water? How do we meet that with calm? And so being in a healthy marriage means that we don't fight fire with fire and that we do the things to be a partner that can be calm and non-reactive, that we know how to take care of ourselves. That so we approach situations with more level-headedness, that we don't approach situations with a ton of stress and temper, that we're able to listen, we're able to hear feedback, we're able to not be defensive, and that's because we've done the things to take care of ourselves and build awareness of ourselves and where we might have stress that needs to be taken care of or where we might have triggers so that we can be less reactive to our partner. And our partner does the same things. There's this reciprocity where we both know what we need to do to take care of ourselves better so that we can be better for our partner. So a partnership that is full of you know explosive arguments and people not listening to each other and slam doors and avoidance and um, gray rocking and avoidance and you know just a lot of huge energy is going to feel unhealthier versus a marriage that says you know what I'm not feeling like I'm going to approach this in the most intentional way I need a break I need some space I need to go calm down do you mind if I go take a walk before we talk about this you know can we talk about this in the morning I think I really need a good night's sleep I'm too tired to talk about this right now. I know it's really important to you. I want to validate the fact that I hear you, but I'm not going to give you the best response right now. And then the partner being respectful of that. But we have to come at it with self-awareness to validate, provide empathy, and be self-aware and say, you know, I'm not going to be the best partner to you right now in order to discuss this or to give you what you need. Number five is intimacy. Without intimacy, we are roommates. And so then when the trash piles up and the laundry is not getting done and the dishes still need to get done, there's not a lot of compassion for a roommate. You have to remember why you're in this partnership with this person. There's a sexual energy that needs to be taken care of. And so making time, making it a priority for intimacy is important and necessary for a healthy marriage. And then the bonus, and this is more than just a tip, it's more of just a philosophy for a healthy marriage. And it's simply seeing this person as someone that you care deeply about their happiness, their needs being met, their health, their joy, that you want the best for them because they are your best friend. They are someone that you love and so what do they need? What do they need help with? Gosh, you know what? My partner's having a really long, hard week. I'm gonna make sure that I can do a little bit extra around the house or you know, I'll pick up the kids from daycare or I'll order takeout or I'll just anticipate some of their needs because I genuinely care about them and I genuinely care about their health and their happiness. So often we start looking at our partner when we're in an unhealthy relationship with resentment and we want to punish them as we're saying, well, they're not doing that for me. I'm not going to do that for them. And we see these check boxes, right? And we're saying, well, I'm carrying more of the mental load and they're not doing that for me. Gosh, that's not how we want to treat people. That's not how we want to treat best friends. It's not even how we would want to treat a neighbor or a stranger. You see someone struggling you want everyone to be happy. So yeah, you might have a personal <laughs> vendetta against your partner when your needs aren't getting met, but ultimately who's gonna right that wrong? When we're in an unhealthy marriage, we take everything so personally and we end up punishing the other person. And so how can you shift your mindset of, 
This person deserves to be happy, whether it's with or without me, important. And so what can I do to help them be healthy and happy and just to help them? Because life is hard. Please, would love to hear your own tips for a healthy marriage or the own signs that you've seen for unhealthy marriage. This list is not exhaustive. And you all probably have your own personal stories. But this is just a general overview, some things that are important to recognize, important to note as you carry on with your partner. Stay tuned as we continue to talk about couples and relationships this month, and also as Reset starts to unveil more of our couples programming. Thanks so much for your time.